Karen Jeffrey Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to discuss how we can make a sequence diagram. So guys, first we will discuss what is a sequence diagram. Okay, you must have seen my old video regarding system sequence diagram. Okay, sequence diagram is nothing but an expanded form of a system sequence diagram. So what happens in a system sequence diagram, we show our system as one whole system. But in sequence diagram, we divide our system into different components. Okay, and how many components we have to show, it depends upon at what level of design we are. Okay, for example, we always take, I always take the example of ATM machine, right? So we have a customer, he is an actor, right? So he can, on an ATM machine, he can withdraw cash, right? So this is a use case and what is this system? This system is nothing but a bank ATM machine, right? Now here, when we make a system sequence diagram, we show this machine as one single system. But you know, in reality, one system is always made up of different, different components. When we perform this use case to withdraw cash, there are different components of ATM who play different, different role. And all these components, they interact with each other in order to complete that use case. Okay. When we can show all this information means what are the sub components or objects of the system and what are the interactions between them in order to complete this use case, then that diagram is called as sequence diagram and guys how many objects we have to show it depends upon what level of design we are okay if we are going into deep design then we can include on adding more objects or more object classes to it okay now i'll take the example of withdrawing cash use case for atm and i'll be covering the basic objects which work together in a atm in order to carry out this use case so guys before we start i would like to explain you the different components which are i'm considering for my atm example okay so here is my actor that is my customer who's going to atm to withdraw cash and guys here i am showing the different basic objects of atm that is the atm console console is nothing but the screen which provides the user interface with with which user interact then ATM has a card reader. So in card reader is the place where you insert the card and ATM is always connected to your bank database. Okay. So these are, I am considering these basic three objects which together, okay, will carry out my use case. And all these objects are components of one single system called as ATM. Okay. So here is my customer actor, ATM console, card reader, bank database. And these are their timelines. These are their timelines. Now guys, to carry out this use case, to carry out this use case, whenever you go to ATM, what is the first thing you do? So you initiate that use case by inserting the card. Now where do we insert the card? We insert the card in card reader. So what customer does? I input message. He inserts card, right? So when he inserts card, the card reader becomes active. So I will activate this object using a rectangle. So what card reader does? So what card reader does? Card reader ver verifies your ATM card. Okay. If card is okay. If card is okay, then it prompts the ATM console and ATM console will ask you to provide you with the pin. Okay. So what card reader does? It will verify your verify card. C A R D. Okay. So after it verifies the card, okay, it sends a message to ATM console card. Okay. When it, this gets the message, it becomes active. Okay. When ATM console gets the message, it becomes 
active and ATM consoles. Okay, and ATM console it prompts you to enter your pin. Okay, so then what do you do? You enter the pin. Where do you enter the pin? You enter the pin using ATM console. Okay, so you provide them with pin and pin number. You send them your pin number. Now, how do ATM console verifies your pin? It sends your pin where? It sends your pin to the bank database because all of our information is not stored in the ATM. It is stored in the bank database, right? Then what bank database does? So it sends the pin to bank database. So there is an input message which goes from the ATM console to the bank database. Now here the bank becomes active. Here the bank becomes active. So your pin is checked against the pin which is stored in the bank database. So here they what did they, they, they do? They verify your pin. They verify your pin. So I will just make a little bit. I will remove this and I will remove this and here the bank database. Now guys, if your pin is okay, bank database verified, your pin is okay, then ATM console will ask you to enter the Amount. Suppose your pin is okay. Bank database sends a message to your console. Pin okay. Okay. Then what customer console will tell? It will ask you enter the amount. It will ask you to enter the amount you want to withdraw. So again you get the message enter amount. And what do you do? You enter the amount like you enter the amount so for example whatever amount you want now after you enter the amount again what happens the console check your balance for example how much funds do you have do you have sufficient funds to complete this transaction or not so again ATM sends a check balance request to your bank database again it sends a request to your bank database called as check balance. Again, one what bank database does, it checks your balance against the amount in your account. Okay. Now, check balance again, us process runs check balance. Right, it checked the balance. Now, after it checks the balance, there are two options. Either you have enough balance so that this transaction can be completed or you have less balance. So here boys and girls, okay, here guys I will include a alternative scenario, right? I think we didn't discuss it before. So I will just to show you, I will use a alternative scenario. Now what happens? you want to withdraw cash okay so you enter the amount suppose you have 200 bucks in your account right the amount which you entered is 250 okay in that case what atm does atm will check if the amount is less than 200 it will withdraw right if it is more than 200 it will ask you insufficient fund please select your another amount so there are two alternatives which alternative will work depends upon the check balance result depends upon the check balance result right so here what comes we have an alternative scenario so for that i write a l t so what it shows in this scenario i have multiple alternatives okay i have multiple alternatives right now what happens in multiple alternatives right it checked the balance if funds are insufficient if funds are insufficient so bank database returned the message to the atm console in sufficient 
funds, then what ATM console should do? This is again the activation period. So then what ATM console should do? It should prompt you to enter alternative amount. So then it, it returns a message. Enter other amount. AMT. Enter other amount. Right? Now, else, if your balance is there, now here I write if. Then in alternative scenarios, we have if and then we have else. Else what will happen? Else what will happen? The console will dispense you the cash. Now, what just happened here? What just happened here? You entered the amount bank database checked if fund is insufficient it will ask you to enter the other amount if it is sufficient then it will dispense your cash means in this case also when they ask you to enter the amount now you selected less than the available balance then it will dispense your cash or in the first place you selected less than available balance in that scenario also then also it will dispense the cash now guys here after it dispenses the cash, your use case is over. Okay. When the use case is over, the customer console also becomes inactive. So this is the phase. This big rectangle is the phase until which your customer console was active. This is the phase. This rectangle shows the, the time until your card reader was active. And this is the phase. Okay. And this is the phase until your bank database was active right so this is the sequence of operations these are the different objects involved in order to carry out one single use case and guys this diagram is called as a sequence diagram and guys i will also leave the link of system sequence diagram in the description so that you do not so that you do not miss anything Okay, guys, so I hope you understand it. Okay, if you like our video, I'll be uploading more and more IT related videos in near future. And if you understand it, and if you like our videos, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you do not miss any notification. And guys, all of you, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section. So till my next video, all of you stay tuned.